Hi everybody, this is Gary. It's Thursday, May 29th, and we've got a new version of OS 10 that was released yesterday, OS 10.5.3. Let's talk about it on this episode of MacMost Now. So here we have Leopard 10.5.3. This is the third update to Leopard and the first update in three and a half months of any sort of magnitude. Now fortunately there's not too much to talk about. Unlike 10.5.2 there are not that many new features. There's a lot of bug fixes. It's a pretty hefty update as well. Over 400 megabytes was my download and your download will vary depending upon your system and when was the last time that you updated. I've updated two machines so far and each update took more than an hour. About 30 minutes to download and these are at high DSL and T1 speeds and then more than 30 minutes to perform the update and the reboot and on my MacBook Pro it actually took an additional 15 minutes for the machine to kind of calm down. The drive was spinning obviously indexing things. Maybe it had an index before maybe updating some files in the background. And finally I had 10.5.3 installed. You can go to the Apple site to this address to actually see all the different changes that were made. The list is quite long if you scroll through it. And mostly it includes things like bug fixes. For instance, if you go ahead and read the list, you'll see that it continuously contains terms like resolves an issue, resolves an issue, resolves an issue, fixes issues, fixes an issues, addresses reliability issues. Just about every single change has some sort of term like that in front of it. So having looked through all of that and I've read other reports on what OS 10.5.3 contains, I did find a few things that are worthy of reporting. One is that it looks like drivers have been updated for all of the major video cards that the Mac uses. So in other words, Nvidia and ATI cards that come with most Macs. So you may see some improvements in graphics rendering. Um, also, it seems a lot of fixes were addressed towards Time Machine, both in getting Time Machine working a little bit better over Wi-Fi networks and getting it to work better with Time Capsule. So if you've been having some issues and seeing some bugs, maybe they've been fixed now. Um, we've also seen some changes here for fixing bugs uh, with video and audio stuttering, maybe when playing back with USB devices. In other words, plugging a USB stick in and trying to play a video file off of it. So perhaps if you have trouble there, you've got some changes and improvements. Um, there's also uh, an iChat now. Uh, in the past, you only got the last 250 messages saved in your archive. So if you had a long ongoing chat with somebody or a group of people, you didn't get the entire thing archived. Now the entire chat, uh, unlimited number of lines, is saved. A lot of dashboard widgets were updated as well. So if you're having trouble with those or maybe they haven't been as fast as they should be, you've got new versions of them, although visibly they look exactly the same. Uh, another change that a lot of people are talking about is the change to the address book. There's now a sync option for syncing to Google Contacts. Google Contacts is your address book that's inside of Gmail. Now there's also been some reports that it only works for people with iPhones for some reason. So only if you have an iPhone that syncs with your Mac does this option appear in address book. I don't see any reason why that should be the case but that's what's being reported. Another very tiny change is in iCal in the week view when you go back and forth you can actually choose in the preferences to go back and forth one day at a time instead of a week at a time. It's a really minor change but it's very useful. It shows you the magnitude of the changes in this revision aren't that big. And speaking of the iPhone, another reason for this update is the fact that the new beta of the iPhone software development kit, beta 6, is now out and it only works with 10.5.3. This was released simultaneously with this release of the OS. So there's definitely some hooks in here that 10.5.3 needed to be released before the beta of the iPhone SDK number 6 came out and of course with the Worldwide Developer Conference coming up just a week from Monday it was probably very important that everything be synchronized and these two releases come out at the same time. Now a question I get asked a lot when a major release like this comes out is should I update or should I wait? Well a couple things to consider. First 10.5.3 isn't just totally brand new. It's actually been released to developers for some time. There have been several different builds released over the last couple of months. So if there have been any bugs in it, there's been thousands, even tens of thousands of Mac users that have had it and have reported these bugs. 
just the same if you're just a casual Mac user, you may want to consider waiting a couple of days, especially considering how long it takes to go ahead and download and install this. You probably don't want to do this in the middle of the workday. I recommend an install of this magnitude actually be done kind of at night or overnight if the machine's at work. Maybe even want to consider doing it over the weekend because it just takes a long time. I mean, it put me out of commission for a whole hour last night. So the bottom line is don't be afraid to update, but don't update till you have the time. That's it for today. Until next time, this is Gary Rosenzweig with MacMost Now.